So something fascinating has been happening in the Northwest coal export debate over the past year or so. It hasn't gotten nearly as much attention as the, the big public protests or the waves of opposition that we've seen at the public hearings, but it's going to be very important to uh, what happens to these coal terminals in the future. The story of the coal export bubble really starts in 2009. That's when China went from being a net exporter of coal to becoming a net importer of coal. And that sent shockwaves throughout the Pacific Rim coal markets because suddenly you had major new demand and less supply on those markets. So over the course of 2009 to 2011, we saw steady incremental rises in the price of coal. And they added up to a major change. So what happens when coal prices rise? Well, new players get into the game. We saw major increases in production from Australia and from Indonesia. We, we in particular, saw China try to modernize its coal industry by shutting down some of its older, higher cost mines and boosting production from its lower cost mines. The overall effect was to greatly increase the supply of coal on the Pacific Rim market. So it was during this meteoric rise in coal prices that a lot of coal companies hatched plans to build coal terminals on the west coast so they could ship more of their coal overseas. So the problem is that coal companies didn't see this rise in prices as a bubble. They thought it was the new normal. They thought they were going to have high prices as far as the eye could see. But what goes up can come down, and that's exactly what happened. Starting in early 2011, we saw a peak in coal prices. And over the next few years, we saw coal prices fall almost as fast as they had risen. So here's the thing. The coal companies were launching their export plans when prices were rising, but they only formally announced them after prices had already peaked. Since then, prices have gone down and down and down, and they've gone down to the point where coal companies simply can't make a profit exporting their coal anymore. The collapse of the coal export bubble teaches us two things. First, coal exports are an incredibly risky endeavor. Uh, coal prices can rise, they can fall. Uh, you can't guarantee that you're going to be able to ship your product out at a profit. Um, even if you think that pr prices are going to rise in the long term, you could be wrong. The second thing it teaches us is that coal companies' strategy at this point is simply to hope that the coal bubble reinflates. That in the future, somehow, some way, prices will rise again to the point where they can start making profits from selling coal overseas. We don't know if that's going to happen. They're promising jobs. What we see right now is they can't make a profit selling their coal to Asia.